get the meeting started at um, our regular meeting, Rockwood Water People's Utility District Board of Directors, September 26th, and it's 6.15. And approval of the agenda, is there any changes? To uh, no changes, President Lewis. Okay. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Okay, and a second, please. All second. Very good, Larry. And all in favor say aye. 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 Number two, approval of the consent agenda. Any changes there? Uh, no changes. Okay, and a motion to approve the consent agenda, please. Motion to approve. Okay, and a second. A second. Okay, Toby, thank you. And all in favor say aye. 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 And approval of the minutes of August 22nd, 2018 regular board meeting. Um, did everyone have a chance to look that over and um, see no activity there? Can we approve the minutes, uh, motion to approve the minutes of August 22nd? No motion. Okay. And, uh, second, thanks, Steve. And all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, it takes us down to the bills. And... Um, Steve, did you have any I have no questions? questions? No. And I'll go the other way for a second. Larry, did you have anything? Uh, I did, but it's more of a comment than a question. Okay. Looks uh, like we spent some more money fixing the gate. What happened to the gate? Uh, West, West Gate, you said. Yeah, the, the operator, we were having a difficult time. Um, each of the, the key fobs has to be um, programmed for it, and some of them um, we're programmed to hold the gate open, and so we were having diff we were having problems programming it internally. So we uh, re requested Metro to come out and show us how to do it. So now we can take care of it ourselves. Oh, well, that's like that under a guarantee or anything? <laughs> What's that? Is that like under a guarantee that part of putting it in they? If something goes sideways or doesn't work right, they come and fix it? Or? Um, well, it was something that had happened over the course of time to where um, we've got two different gate operators and they don't work the same. So this one was being held open uh, by a couple, but we couldn't identify each of the fobs. So they had to come in and kind of reprogram most of them. But they also showed our employees how to do it. So we shouldn't need to request them to come back out to, to do that programming for it. Mm -hmm. That's all I had a question. Mm -hmm. Kobe, anything? No. Okay. <coughs> and Kathy? Um, I don't have my paper in front of me, but last time I asked about the, I think the, is it Chase Consulting? Mm -hmm. I said that was an annual fee. Mm -hmm. And then I see other uh, charges for Chase. Is mm -hmm. there, are these like monthly maintenance or? <coughs> Right. Uh, President Lewis, uh, Director Zimmerman, uh, we have an annual contract with SHABS for our billing system, and so we do have monthly charges related to uh, them uh, getting in maintaining our billing system. In addition, we have charge, you'll see charges from them if there is uh, updates or changes to the system that we need to uh, take a look at. They'll uh, be uh, there'll be some charges on that, and then the item that you had last uh, month had to do with billing stock, and so that was typically an annual expense where we, you know, we pay for the billing stock for the year. But we will see monthly expenses from Shabs just for processing and in sending out our bill our bills. So you will see that. Uh, yes. I have one more. Sure. Mm -hmm. Larry. Uh, again, point of curiosity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are paying what looks to be the Gresham for wellhead protection, about mm -hmm. $60,000. Mm -hmm. I thought they were kind of like our partner on the well. Why are we paying them $60,000? Correct, correct. Uh, Director Dixon, uh, what we pay for is uh, a half, about a, not quite a half of a position that manages the well field program for us, and then they contribute the other half 
uh, of all the uh, all the expense of going around visiting businesses, making sure that they're complying with Wellfield, evaluating new businesses coming in. So, so that is a, an annual expense that we contribute as a partner, and then they pay the other 50 percent of that. In fact, we probably they they probably end up paying more than just the 50 percent uh, 50 50 split. So that's what it is. Let me get this right. They hire somebody to go out and talk to people who own their own wells. Is that what you're saying? No, no. The uh, what uh, what the well field inspector does is uh, part of the well field uh, the well field protection plan is making sure that any business who is in the program uh, is either annually uh, inspected or biannually inspected and also providing annual reports of any other housekeeping, the chemicals they have on site. So the individual, he, he manages that aspect of it where he makes sure that the businesses are in compliance, they are doing the things that they need to do. And it's mainly businesses that are storing large amounts of chemicals that have the ability to get into the groundwater. So these aren't necessarily people who have their own wells, but they are people that are managing chemicals that are uh, toxic enough that if they did get into the groundwater, they could they could create some quite a bit of havoc with water quality uh, for the groundwater supply. So that's what this individual does. In addition, when new businesses are coming into uh, the area within the well field protection area, he makes sure that they understand the rules that they are not stockpiling large amounts of chemicals if they are because of their business, uh, that they are stored appropriately, that there's spill containment, spill kits, uh, education uh, for the employees and that. So that, that's kind of what the individual does as part of the well field program. I think that'd be a county or a state agency that would do that and not us and Gresham pool of money to do that. Right. It, 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 you would, there, there are agency people for the DEQ that deal with stormwater and wastewater. Uh, the drinking water section has individuals who uh, may have a statewide present or you know a program, but they don't get out into the field. It's left up to the individual jurisdictions that have the well field uh, <coughs> protection plans to administer and to regulate uh, and to uh, have the teeth to be able to find if we have an individual or a business out there that refuses to comply. And so that's done on the local level is where all of that is managed. But it's a one-time charge that we have. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting because they send us a, a payment uh, a request from us for the well field program and at the same time we send them a bill for their contribution to the well field operation and we send it's basically an eighty thousand dollar bill and then we'll send them another eighty thousand dollar bill in january so we split up our billings to them uh, in July and then again in January, approximately. So this is semi-in? Uh, this one here is just a one-time one -time, uh, payment, and that's for the program for the entire fiscal year. Did you have more questions, Kat? Okay. Okay, very good. Um, I'll ask for a motion to approve the bills. I'll make a motion. Okay, and a second, please. A second. Okay, Steve, and all in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Uh, public comment on non agenda items. Seeing none, we'll move to number six resolution RWPUD 1819 001. District Building Preventive Maintenance Policy. And um, 
I believe this is the second time, but maybe Brian, if you want to highlight mm -hmm. where we're at with the you bet. process. You bet, President Lewis, directors. Uh, what you have tonight is uh, the final, it's the actually the enactment uh, meeting for uh, adoption of the uh, of now a, a district building preventive maintenance program, part of the, uh, you know, kind of our reduction uh, through SDIS uh, is to have a, uh, a, an actual defined policy related to preventive maintenance uh, around our buildings. And so uh, this policy uh, we re did receive from SDIS as a model policy. Staff went through it. We went through the checklist to uh, make sure uh, the items were applicable to district operation. And uh, with the adoption of this policy, then that will uh, assist the uh, district in reducing uh, insurance costs in by adopting the policy. Okay. Um, any input from the board, comments? Okay, um, so we want to uh, ins institute the, the policy uh, with a motion to agree to have uh, a resolution on building preventive maintenance policy. Yes, correct. Um, can I get a motion to approve the resolution, please? I so move. Okay, and a second, please. Okay, thanks, Larry. And all in favor of resolution 18 slash 19001 district building preventive maintenance policy, say aye. 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 Um, takes us to number seven on the agenda 20, 2019 board conference travel approval. And I assume that. Uh, Carrie has given us some guidance in that regard the last few years. Do you have some news? <laughs> or same old? Um, not exactly same old. Um, the Pacific Northwest Section Conference, as you'll notice, is in Vancouver, Washington. So that's in the metro area, and typically um, we follow the federal guidelines as far as um, hotel costs and not providing that for conferences. And, and, and another thing I thought I, I might note is that um, I realize in the past that we have, that the board has approved an overnight stay for like the night of the banquet because it is a kind of a late night event and people want to attend the awards ceremony. And so I leave that, of course, is the board's discretion. Um, I. I was thinking, though, in this day and age, uh, we do have a, a little bit more options as far as getting to and from events in the evening without taking our personal cars, which, you know, like Uber and Lyft, um, and that those could also be utilized, of which would be a, a reasonable district expense um, to be able to attend those, you know, late night events. So um, something else for you to consider that if there were events that were going to be later in the evening that we could take advantage of those kinds of opportunities as well. So um, I guess that would be one point of discussion would be um, what you would like to do about that local conference as far as, <coughs> as um, if you wanted to approve the hotel for the banquet evening or, or not. Um, go with you know the other options that I had just mentioned, and then um, the annual conferences in Denver. They will be following the schedule as they had done not last year but in previous years. So the pre-conferences will be beginning on Sunday. So uh, travel would be suggested for Saturday, and uh, because the flight would be more than three hours long and and they're limited going east. Um, probably we would be confined to an early morning flight and getting there later in the day. So it would be definitely a full day of travel. So recommended that, that Saturday would be the arrival date so that people who wanted to attend pre-conferences could do so on Sunday and or the meet and greet is typically held on Sunday as well. Okay. Uh, 
Um, I don't really have any other comments. The SBAO conference is in Sun River, and it's um, there's nothing new really about their schedule this year. So. Okay. Um, so I, I don't suppose at this time we need to fess up or think that we know our plan to get across the river on uh, spending the evening uh, or overnight in Vancouver. But does anybody have a comment on that? Um, conference activity for the late night? Uh, Hmm. Sure. And, and President Lewis, directors, you know, one thing that uh, you could do is make make that optional. Um, you know that uh, what you would be doing is adopting you know these conferences as part of your your annual attendance. Uh, that's not to say that there won't be other activities or other conferences, trainings that may come up throughout the year. So that. It, it's not, this doesn't lock us, you know, the, the board into just these three. But you could, for the uh, section conference in Vancouver, provide, you know, a, make it, you know, give it a, an option that there might be an option that if, you know, a, uh, for some reason a board member uh, chose to just spend the night there, that that would be a reasonable option that they could <coughs> entertain. And uh, then that way it would fall within the policy and, and, you know, we would be able to then easily take care of that. Okay. And uh, would that necessarily, when time comes a month out or something, you usually do book overnight accommodations, but um, would that be necessary or... Could it be just that we stay at any hotel on on the fly, so to speak, on that evening without, or would you like to work it into your plan? How does that happen with uh, documenting our So I can tell you that the chances of the hotel that's closest to the venue will sell out in January. And mm -hmm. it will sell out probably the week that they make the reservations available. The, the, the registration available. Okay. Um, so January, the first week of January would be the target date for trying to get into the host hotel. Okay. Um, it, if, if there is, um, like you said on the fly, um, reservations want to be made, I'm happy to make them at the hotel in your choice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Sounds like um, I would encourage maybe that we have our personal schedules in gear to the conference and just kind of plan on uh, letting Carrie know in, in January. I say that part as well because there's those um, uh, events that uh, allow uh, us to mix it with other water people mm -hmm. And et cetera, even in the hallways or whatever that might mm -hmm. uh, appear to be. So I, I would encourage that we can get our plans together for the, mm -hmm. the January yeah. host hotel. There is another option. Um, typically, I do just go ahead and make reservations mm -hmm. for those I feel that are going to be attending. And then we have up to 48 hours in advance to of cancel. that stay to yeah. cancel. So that would be probably the best option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's what I would suggest <laughs> is we would just go ahead and we'll pre-book, uh, you know, quite a number of rooms just to, just in, in case. And as plans solidify, you know, it's easy to release those rooms and there won't be any problems with the host hotel filling them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we probably do require or ask. Um, action to uh, at least these three particular uh, com conference dates and activities concerned mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. um, so is there any more discussion or comment about 
um, any of the conference activities? No. Nope. Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to approve board conference travel. A motion. Okay. And a second, please. Did you want to handle this? Second, sir, thank you, Kathy. You want to handle And all in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Okay, down to sur surplus equipment discussion. And Ryan, yeah, we'll let Andy go. I can take it. Um, so um, after the start of the fiscal year, we had some um, purchases for equipment that were scheduled on the replacement plan, um, a trailer, um, a new roller, and a couple of meter reading vehicles. Uh, and and so in that process of replacing them, uh, the ones that we currently own, uh, we'd like to dispose of because they're basically of no no longer value or use to the, the field employees for what they're, they're meant for. Um, so we'd like to dispose of those as well as uh, we have a couple of generators that we've replaced. I know that both of them have been here at least 15 years and have been well used so the value that I put on them as a hundred bucks each is probably more than what they're actually worth but um, we'll try and get that out of them so um, these are I, I, I just have on here currently um, RW 11 which is the vehicle the Ford pickup f-150 that was uh, that was stolen <coughs> recovered then stolen again and recovered and um, so it's more of a liability <laughs> than um, than anything so we'd like to just get rid of it so it doesn't take up one of the bays in the shop and um, it's one of the older vehicles that we have anyway um, that one and then the uh, two go far they're the meter reading vehicles uh, which we can no longer get parts for um, you know we've, we've had to kind of uh, patch them through until now so the new ones should be here in a in several weeks so when that happens we'll we'll go ahead and liquidate those two vehicles i'm sure they'll probably stay local and end up ice cream trucks or something but um what are you going to replace them with uh two new ones i'm sorry two two new ones we've already ordered them they were mm -hmm. on the uh the budget for this year larry so, wants it Oh yeah. Are they interceptors or just yeah? They're brand? they're they're just the newer model. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So so these this is the first cut, and so probably when we get closer to replacing the trailer and the roller, when they're they're closer to being here, yeah. we'll throw that on there as well, and that'll be something we'll try and get rid of as well. Okay. Which uh, which trailer are you talking about? Uh, the tilt deck, the excavator trailer. Oh, okay. The triple axle one that we keep buying tires for because they scrub off. There's three of them, you know. We've, I think we probably could have replaced it with the amount of tires that we've spent um, replacing. Six new tires on a trailer. This one. That was yeah. Pipe trailer. Or? No, that's. Oh, was that the pipe trailer? Yeah, that was the yeah. pipe trailer. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think those were 18 years old. Those tires. Are Okay. Any other comments or questions? It, I, I was going to add. Okay. So the way I've, I've kind of disposed of these previously is I just put an ad on Craigslist with like a two, like a um, closed bid, it's like a two week limit. Just put the ad out there. If they have any questions, they can you know contact us. But you know it's a sealed bid. We'll take it here at the office. We'll have a cutoff date. When that date comes, if we've got um, I usually start at a minimum bid as well, so probably what you see here is kind of where we'll start. If it doesn't sell, I'll relist it, lower the the you know the starting bid, and and see what we can get for them. Just okay, process. Yeah. Okay. It had a logo on it, yeah. Um, now it. Oh, they scratched. Yeah, <laughs> Scra they painted and scratched over it oh. with like a brush, paint oh, brush, okay. paint. And so. I just wanted to make sure that was off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we, we we take care of pretty much everything on the vehicle. You'll see outlines of where the old logos yeah. were, just because of the 
uh, deterioration of the paint. But um, yeah, pretty much any indication that it was ever one of our vehicles right. is usually taken off. Okay. Yeah. Do we need to have a motion to <coughs> declare these, these items? Yes, President Lewis, we'd, we'd like to motion to uh, declare the items uh, surplus, the items uh, as presented by staff surplus. And direct staff to dispose, dispose. of the items today. Yeah. Okay, do I have a motion to reflect? Um, disposing of surplus equipment. I'll make a motion. Okay. And second, please. Second. Second. Okay. Thank you. And all in favor to dispose of surplus equipment listed, uh, say aye. 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 Very good. Takes us down for the good of the order. And, uh, Maybe I'll start with Brian Stahl. Okay, thank you, President Lewis. Uh, directors, uh, it, it has been all things groundwater uh, for staff uh, this this past uh, month, and and I think we're we're getting a lot of movement in. Uh, you know, there's a lot of balls in the air, which uh, makes life exciting, especially as those balls start to fall, uh, making sure they uh, end up in the same slot. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, we have uh, GSI, our uh, hydrogeologist of record. Uh, they're in the process uh, of uh, the drafted specifications for drilling. Uh, they are contacting drillers uh, for a, uh, the, a two test well in a production well and right now we're in a holding pattern uh, because we are uh, waiting uh, for our discussions with Metro as well as microchip um, and so uh, that'll be a little bit more information tonight about where we are with uh, the real real property transactions uh, we have Murray Smith uh, currently was the proposal for the groundwater development master plan. Had a meeting with them last Thursday. Uh, we went through each one of the tasks uh, that uh, that what we our expectations of the product that uh, they will be producing for us. Currently, right now, they have taken that information and we are waiting for uh, a scope and uh, cost per task uh, for each one. And as soon as we get that review, what uh, is being proposed, the amount of time that they are uh, looking to put into each one of the tasks, what the receivables will be, uh, as soon as we feel comfortable with that, we'll get that contract going and, and get them working on uh, those various aspects of that groundwater development master plan. Ultimately, what will come out of that is uh, a pretty good ro strategy roadmap for each one of the individual sites. We're looking at uh, uh, any improvements that we may need to consider at uh, the individual locations and a, a cost so that we can then roll those figures into our finance model. Uh, so that, and as well as a schedule so that uh, we can continue to move forward. Uh, Gresham is at the table and we anticipate that uh, any of the work done by Murray Smith will be uh, jointly funded. Uh, we will uh, go ahead and take care of the contract and then Bill will we'll take care of the contract out of our groundwater fund or no out of our general fund, that's where the, uh, the, the projects are under our master uh, major projects list. But we will bill uh, Gresham out of our groundwater fund to be sure that those costs are recovered uh, from our partner. The, uh, we have, uh, see the SDAO Water Committee, we're providing uh, information on them with regards to uh, legislation, or uh, actually ORS changes being proposed on the uh, green, blue, or the blue-green algae testing. Uh, there are some uh, requirements that OHA was looking to implement 
that would potentially affect the district, uh, and we pointed out that as a wholesale contract or a wholesale purchaser of Portland, uh, if they are doing all the testing uh, for these types of, uh, of chemicals, it, it didn't make a lot of sense for downstream wholesalers to be duplicating testing that is already being done uh, by the supplier of the water. And so we provided comment uh, to SDAO, uh, you know, for those comments back to OHA. Uh, See, uh, one of the things the district has picked up is uh, re, re energizing the Portland uh, Columbia Basin Groundwater Users Group. Uh, one of the big items that uh, we discovered in looking at water rights and, and demands and draws on uh, the aquifers below East County is that there really is not a master list of all the groundwater users, the uh, rates of withdrawal, their current water rights allow, uh, how those withdrawals potentially could stack on one another. And if there were ever a problem with the aquifer below us, how seniority would work uh, related to uh, you know, possibly junior water users, you know, if that ever were to come about, uh, would be required to get off the system before senior water uh, right holders. We don't ever anticipate that happening. The, uh, the aquifers below uh, this area of East County uh, that extend all the way to uh, Clark, uh, Clark PUD uh, over in, in the city of Vancouver and even further uh, north and west. But it's good to, to at least understand what is out there create the master list which the district has uh, prepared share that so that everybody is on the same tape at the same uh, uh, level playing field uh, as we move forward in addition to answer uh, director dixon's question related to well field protection because we are all investing uh, a lot of money and resources into groundwater it behooves us to have a robust well field protection plan because uh, any one any bad actor that would happen to come in uh, and uh, create a contaminated spill that could impact aquifers has a pretty dire effect on everyone using that resource. And so having a robust well field protection plan, uh, which we do have with Cascade between us and Gresham, uh, but we also want to, uh, you know, encourage Wood Village and Troutdale to also uh, join in that effort. Fairview already is part and parcel of both uh, the district's Cascade and Portland's uh, Columbia South Shore. But just to make sure that everyone, it's a level playing field. So there isn't an economic harm or detriment being a member of the Wellfield Protection Plan. In fact, I, I believe it, it's, you know, our belief that, uh, you know, this is a critical resource upon which our community relies and it, it is our responsibility as their managers of the resource to be sure that it receives the utmost protection and care. And so that's going to be the focus, at least for the district, uh, in this effort, and we're going to uh, continue to encourage, whether it's East County, whether it's uh, cities across the river, uh, that everybody have that robust plan so that we are all protecting a, a critical resource to all of us. So we are involved with that. The uh, Financial policies, I just wanted to let the uh, board know uh, you got a, a taste of that last spring. We haven't forgotten it. Our attention has been 
definitely diverted in other directions, but I'm hoping to get the second part of those policies to the board to review in November uh, so that we can complete that effort, have a, uh, you know, a, an adoption, hopefully, of financial policies for the district going forward, and having that document the, then uh, guide us uh, into the future as far as any financial uh, decisions or approaches the district is considering. So I didn't want the board to think that we'd forgotten that. It suddenly fell off the table, uh, but it, it uh, will be, our, our hope is to bring it back in, in November to kind of discuss part two, which will uh, complete that effort. Uh, and then finally, just the SDIS training uh, in October. We wanted to try to keep this meeting as short as possible, mainly because uh, next meeting will be lengthy and uh, want to be respectful of your time. So that's uh, that's all I have. Very good. Abby, do you have any? Uh, okay. Steve? <laughs> good to the order. Nope. Larry? Nope. Okay. Carrie? Okay. No. Uh, I'll mention that uh, the invite is still open to um, board members to join me at um, the Regional Water Providers Consortium meeting on October 3rd. Uh, I'll attend with you. Mm. That would be great. Uh, okay. Appreciate it. Uh, just the, it'll be a metro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at metro. And I think there's seven. Yeah, I, I think it's seven o'clock. Yes. And, and uh, President Lewis, uh, you know, Director Zimmerman, what what I will do is uh, at six thirty. What I'll do is I'll I'll make a copy of the packet and uh, have that delivered to you, uh, Director Zimmerman, for your review. And then if you had any questions, obviously uh, President Lewis or myself would be available. Mm -hmm. uh, and. and Furthering uh, consortium tasks, I, I'll mention that it was a concerted effort this last summer that um, the algae bloom that happened <coughs> in Salem, we were able to send, I think we have four water delivery emergency delivery vehicles spread through the metro area. We hope to add more with grants and such in days to come, but was able to borrow out four delivery vehicles down to Salem when they had this stress for delivering uh, water without the algae bloom effects in it. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the emergency duties that was able to be taken up with uh, the consortium so mm -hmm. uh, they're they're there sometimes it, it's it's quiet or you see uh, television or trimet buses with uh, conservation messages but the emergency uh, when needed I, I think is probably one of the highlights and most detrimental efforts put out by the consortium that can mm -hmm. be done so um, just, just wanted to let you know that they're, they're busy. They're busy behind the scenes, um, mm -hmm. coordinating, coordinating those efforts. Um, and so that's what I have. Uh, number ten is we will move into executive session ORS one nine two point six six zero parentheses two E to conduct deliberations with persons designated by the governing body to negotiate real property transactions. And I believe I'll ask for a motion to suspend the regular board meeting and move into executive session. Make a motion. Okay, and a second please. A second. Okay, Steve. Very good, we'll uh, move, move away. Oh, all in favor say aye. Aye. aye.